Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this particular video, I will take you through how we can configure Ansible for network automation. So we work with a lot of network devices, uh, Cisco, VYOS, Juniper. But if you wanted to automate configuring those devices using Ansible, then how could you do that? So that's what I'm going to show you today. We have two devices in this tutorial. So we have a Cisco device and then we have a VYOS device and we'll go through how we can configure them. Ansible is already installed on top of our rel 8 machine that I have here. And we are using the Ansible version. 2.9 with Python 3.6 being used in the background as we know that Ansible uses Python. We'll create a directory here, call it, let's say network and navigate to the directory. We'll open the directory up using VS code since that will make it, uh, sorry, since that will make it easier for us to work with the directory. So we'll just open it up. Uh, home, sysadmin, network. Here is the directory. Switch back to the sysadmin user. And in this directory, we'll first create a file, call it inventory. And this is going to be the inventory file that we work with. In this inventory file, we'll provide the names of our machines. So we have one machine that has Cisco one.networknuts.io. Then we have vbyos1.networknuts.io. These are already configured in my DNS. The Cisco machine will be a part of a group known as iOS and the vbyos machine will be part of a group known as vbyos. Again, I'm assuming that you know what is an inventory file in Ansible and what are groups. We'll create another parent group known as network and network will have some children inside it, which are iOS and vbyos and save it. We'll just check the host file. Yes, Cisco 01 at networknuts.io, vbyos1 at networknuts.io. Yeah, so looks good. The next part is understanding how Ansible will work here. So by default, Ansible is created for Linux automation, but you could use it for Windows automation as well as network automation, but you will have to make certain changes. So the first thing that we'll have to do is we'll copy the original ansible.cfg to this directory. And we'll open the CFG file and in the CFG file, we'll make some changes. So the default inventory path, we will change to the inventory that we just created. So dot slash inventory, which means a file known as inventory in the current working directory. We'll scroll down and we'll enable, sorry, we'll disable host key verification scroll down let's see let's see let's see ssh timeout i just saw it somewhere yes so ssh timeout value will increase because often it will take time to connect to these devices and we don't want timeout errors keep on scrolling down Okay, so in this section, we will make some more changes here. The number of retries will be, say, five. You can change that. Connection timeout value, I'll make 100 seconds. Command timeout will also be 100 seconds and save it. We can close this now. Now, another thing to understand here is that which user are we going to connect as? So by default, Ansible will connect as a user that you are logged in as. In my case, that is sysadmin. But the user sysadmin does not exist on the Cisco device or the vbyos device. We have different users and different passwords. So we'll create a directory here, call it group underscore vars. And in group pairs, we'll create certain files here. So we'll create a file, call it 
ios.yml and this file will contain variables for the ios group we'll create a second file as well call it vivaos.yml this will contain variables of the vivaos group and a network.yml that will contain the variables of the network group in the network.yml will enter the variable ansible underscore connection value of so if you run the command ansible hyphen dog hyphen t connection hyphen l we can get a list of all available connection methods hyphen t here represents plugin type so plugin type is connection and hyphen l represents list now we have a connection method available known as network underscore cli and this is the connection method that we use to connect to network appliances and that is what we require here as well and we'll save it then let's go to the ios variable file and here we'll create a variable ansible underscore user uh, with the value of the username that we have is sysadmin ansible underscore password is red hat and yeah weak password and ansible underscore network sorry. ansible underscore network underscore os is ios then we'll go to the v by os device variable file and here we'll go ansible underscore user is v by os Ansible underscore password is VivaOS as well. Again, a weak password. And enable Ansible underscore network underscore OS is VivaOS. So all VivaOS values here. So this is the structure that you will end up with. So you have your Ansible.cog configured, you have your inventory file configured, and you have your group variables applied. So we can do a test run so i could do an ansible all hyphen and ping to verify whether i'm able to connect to these devices or not using hands and we have a success here so we are successfully able to connect to the vivaos device as well as a cisco device however there is one problem in the whole scenario which is that your variable files which is vivaos.dml and ios.dml they they contain passwords here uh, that's red hat and vivaos and these are right on plain text and you don't want that you want these to be encrypted so what changes will you have to do to achieve that so we'll just close them here and we'll encrypt them using ansible vault so i'll run ansible vault encrypt that's the file is ios.email And we have a permission issue. Okay, no worries. Just go root. And we'll again do Ansible Vault encrypt. Look first, ios.yml. Provide a password, confirm the password. Do the same thing with vivaos.yml. Provide a password. Okay. Again, provide a password. And from the password, so this is done. The next part will be how do you run it now? Now that they are encrypted, as you can see, that Ansible is using AES two five six to encrypt the data. And if you now do an Ansible all hyphen m ping, that's going to fail because you have some files that are encrypted which are being used, and you are not providing any vault secret or vault password. So you have different methods available. Uh, the easiest method that you could use is just put a hyphen hyphen ask hyphen vault hyphen pass. And that will do it for you. So it will prompt you for the password. You provide the correct password and the connection will be established. If you provide, sorry, if you provide a wrong password, then you will you know end up getting an error. So that's something to be careful about. You could also supply the password in a temporary file or perhaps into an environment variable as well. But then you have to read out the documentation of Ansible Vault that is not related to this, what we're trying to do right now. If you 
want to uh, go more into this, I would recommend that you read the available modules for iOS and VivaOS devices. You could also, you know, run a playbook. So I'll give you a playbook example here as well. So say we'll just create a simple playbook here and we'll call it iOS underscore ping dot email. And as the name is suggesting, we want the iOS device to ping a particular IP address and so using a playbook. So generally you use Vim or VI or some other text editor to write a playbook. However, I would recommend that you use VS code. Uh, VS code comes with a Ansible language server officially by Red Hat, which makes it very useful while writing playbooks. So you get a lot of auto completion, which is not available by default. So I'll give you an example. So we'll just shift to the Ansible extension. And now when I write my playbook, I get a lot of auto complete here. So we'll start off by writing simple playbook to ping a post. Then post, so as you can see, it auto complete it to all, not all actually, to iOS tasks. Then ping 192.168.0.187. And the module is iOS underscore ping. And we'll put the disk so it can tell you that, hey, this is a required parameter, which means you need to provide it in order to run it successfully. That's the wrong IP address. We'll register the output into a variable called it iOS underscore response. Then we'll print out this response. So print iOS underscore response. We'll use a debug module. Again, a built-in Ansible module. And the variable that we are printing is iOS underscore response. Save it. Uh, so now that the configuration has been done and our playbook is ready, let us try to execute this playbook. So we'll run the command Ansible hyphen playbook. Playbook name. And then hyphen hyphen ask vault pass. Because again, we want Ansible to prompt us for the password before execution. And here you can see that the iOS device was successfully able to ping this particular IP address. And then here is a packet loss, the packet sent, the packet received, and all other information. Now, all you need to do is, after doing the initial configuration, is read different modules regarding your iOS device or your VYOS device, and then simply execute them using a playbook. I hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, let me know what other kinds of stuff would you like to automate and we'll get some videos up and available for that. Thank you.